If you are always looking for new recipes because you're bored with the same old stuff, I'm right there with you. So I go out in search of new recipes and sometimes I bring some recipes of my own and share them with you so you have some new things to make in your kitchen. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Okay y'all, it has been a minute since I have been in the kitchen filming. I've been in the kitchen just off camera, but we've just had a lot going on here at our house. If you follow me on Instagram, and you may have seen it on Facebook as well, you already know that we have had a large project going on at our house. It was originally quoted to us to be done in eight to 10 weeks. It took seven months, but over the last couple of weeks it came to completion. And so I haven't been able to film as much because we've had contractors here at the house all the time. I'll share more about that later. First, let's make some yummy dinner. These are gonna be baked maple chicken thighs. I'm sure you could do this with chicken breasts if you wanted to, because if you don't like the dark meat, but you may just need to adjust your times just to make sure you don't dry it out. I have this large pack of I can talk. I have this large pack of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I did trim them up. Um, I think there are eight in here. So let's get these into a bowl and pour all of the ingredients and kind of let it marinate here on the counter for about 30 minutes. Let's season these with a little bit of salt and pepper. We need some olive oil. I'm gonna do maybe a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Just a couple of turns in here. There we go. We're gonna do about a teaspoon of sesame oil. You don't want too much. That's probably good. We need about a tablespoon and a half of maple syrup. About the same amount, a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. Now we need some, it says pressed garlic. I'm just going to, um, it says, I think we need two cloves. These are really small. I'm gonna do four, but let me roll these out really quickly. And I'm gonna mix all of this up here in just a second too, just to make sure everything gets coated really well. And then I also have some fresh parsley here. I'm gonna chop this up really quickly and we're gonna add in about a tablespoon and a whole leaf. I don't know if you just saw that. A whole leaf just went in there. If you don't have fresh parsley, use dried, but just use about a teaspoon instead of a tablespoon. Now this just needs to hang out on the counter for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna put, I have one of those little what do you call those things? It's like a saran wrap thing, but I think I got it from Dollar Tree. These, the cover-ups. Yeah, I have one that I think will fit. Let's see. Will it fit? It shall. Boom. Okay, I'll be back in 30 minutes. As a side, now I'm, I'm waiting on this for 30 minutes, but right before I put these into the oven. We'll preheat the oven in just a bit. Right before I put them into the oven, I'm gonna get this rice started. I got this um, over the right before Christmas at a vendor fair, and they had samples of these different rices out, and this is the one that I loved the most was the Charleston Red Rice. The name brand or the company is Savor the Flavor. Uh, they have a website, so I will put it down below so you can go check them out. These are so, so yummy, and I think it'll be perfect to go along with our um, chicken thighs tonight. Mandy, have you tried cooking your bacon in the oven on a cookie sheet? Oh, and yes, parchment paper saves some cleanup. I have done bacon in the oven before. Yeah. We've done it many times. Mm -hmm. I prefer to do it on the griddle. That's just me, but we have definitely done yeah. it. It's the thing that I don't love about doing it on the cookie sheet is the cleanup. I feel like it's kind of hard to clean that up. I mean, you, I guess you could let it cool enough to where you can pour it into your your bacon grease jar. Do you have one of those? There's a technical term for that cooling word. What do you call that? Congeal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do y'all have a bacon grease jar? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I dig into this thing all the time. The other night when I made green mm -hmm. beans, I didn't have time to cook the bacon and do all the things. So I just added some bacon grease to it I'll, just to I'll, give it that bacon <clears throat> flavor. I think it's good because it doesn't have the splatter. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? The yeah. splatter from the, the pan and everything getting yeah. all over the stove. I just do it in the on the griddle, but yeah, do, doing it in the oven is definitely a great option. Mm -hmm. And it's less messy as far as like the splatter yeah, goes. Especially if you're that. cooking a lot of it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. If you're cooking like a whole pack, yeah. it's perfect. Okay, we've got about 10 more minutes to wait on the chicken thighs, but I wanted to come over here and preheat my oven. We're gonna preheat it to 425. Someone, maybe a couple of someones, mentioned to me that I should probably try 
the Kitchen Mama can opener. This does the safe edges just like my Pampered Chef one does, but it's a one touch thing. You just stick it right onto the um, can and it takes it, it goes around and does everything for you and then you can take it right off. So let's test it out. She fancy. This is weird. I think it did what it's supposed to do. Oh, <gasps> well, look at that. And no sharp edges. Oh, the oven's ready. My review is that this thing is awesome. You still have those safe edges and I did not have to crank it. I like my Pampered Chef one. There's nothing wrong with it and I'm probably gonna keep it on hand just in case. But I like that I, especially if you're have, you have a recipe that has a lot of cans, this is gonna save my hands the pain of having to turn that thing so our oven is ready so we're gonna go ahead and prep this dish i've got some olive oil here i'm gonna spray this even though there's olive oil on the chicken and it probably won't stick just for good measure and oh my goodness it smells so good y'all let's just add this into our dish okay that fit perfectly i think this is an 11 by 7. um if you your chicken breast if you have more or chicken thighs if you have more chicken thighs or um if they're bigger than these, you'll probably want a nine by 13. You know what? Let's just take the extra juices and just, I mean, why not, right? Okay, this is going in the oven at 425 for about 20 minutes. And then the last five minutes or so, we're gonna pop them under the broiler. So what we did is baked these at 425 for about 25 minutes. They got to about 155 degrees and now I've just turned it over to broil and I'm just gonna watch them for just a couple of minutes until they get a little brown on top. All right, y'all, these just came out from under the broiler. They crisped up just a little bit on top. I'm gonna take the juices and just kind of spoon those over top. It's kind of hard to do, it's cramped in here. We're gonna let these rest for a good five minutes before we plate everything up. And I also have some more fresh parsley that I can put over top. So let's do that too. Did you just get excited? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> let's get up in this thing. I'm oh, telling man. you what. Talk about, probably don't even need a knife. We're being ultra sophisticated here with our knives. Right. All right, let's try this chicken first. Chicken first, here we go. We got a kitty kitty outside. Is there a cat on the front porch? Cole was loving on it a little while ago. He was telling me about it. This is really good. First of all, the chicken is super tender. The juice, the broth, mm -hmm. the drippings or whatever. It's like a savory, sweet, savory kind of thing sweet going on. Sweet, savory, But Very not, good. not over the top. I mean, the okay. flavors are not, you know, incredibly bold. They're really light, Okay. you know, flavor. Yeah. The juices are really, you know, there's no, there's no thickness on the juices. Yeah, so, so you could definitely Make it into a gravy. We could take it. We could mm -hmm. have taken that and maybe um, put some cornstarch, put it on the stove, mm. and you could make it a, into a gravy. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is good. All right. Well, good. Try that rice. I really okay. want to hear what you think about rice. that rice. Here we go, mm -hmm. rice. Oh man, that is good. It reminds me of like a Zatarans type of thing. Right, but better. But better. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got it from the Holiday Fair mm. um, in Greenville when me and Mama went. Oh man. Isn't that good? This is a really good combination. Mm -hmm. So like the chicken, rice. Mm -hmm. And of course my green beans. You did it again. Thanks. I try. You did a good job. Uh, th thank you. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> what do you think? You already had treats. Tell them. I can't get over how tender this chicken is. Well, that's good, babe. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig in. Mm. I'm gonna dig in. There's a cat on the front porch, little miss. There's a kitty on the front porch. Well, you wanna go see it, be friends? She said no. <laughs> this is delicious as is, but if I were to make this again, I would take the extra couple of minutes and turn this into a gravy because the flavors in that broth, the, the juices there are so good. 
And mm -hmm. I feel like if we turned it into a gravy, you know, it would coat every last mm -hmm. bite. So very, very good. But if you're going to make it, I recommend doing that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I you can love use cornstarch. You can use flour. Yeah, either or. Oh, excuse you. Ma'am, what was that? Hmm. Tell them. Okay, y'all. It is our second night. Tonight we are making dinner in the Instant Pot. I believe you could make this on the stove top possibly even the crock pot if you wanted to but i'm going to be doing it in the instant pot just because it's a lot faster but i have to confess something before we even get started do you know what this is cream cheese the last time i snuck that into a recipe steven loved the recipe by the way i'm so glad you like it mm -hmm. i love it it has cream cheese in it So you ain't mad at me? I'm not mad, even though you're being sneaky. I was being sneaky. I was so scared you were gonna come walking in there. I got some constructive criticism that maybe I shouldn't be tricking him <laughs> with my cream cheese. So I'm going to tell him now that it's in there. Hold up. Hey babe, um, last time I put cream cheese in a recipe, I did not tell you about it. Okay. And I got some. You're going to tell me now? I got some constructive criticism. It's only two ounces. You, why are you going to sniff it? You know what it does. Making it sure like. cream cheese. You never know what she might put in there. Stop. So it's only two ounces and it's going in a big pot. So it's going to be very creamy. Then we don't really need it. Yes, we do. <laughs> as long as the end result means that it tastes good, do what you like. Okay. You know what you need to, when, when it's time to eat, you know what you need to wear? Uh, clothes. <laughs> Do you remember the t-shirt? Yeah, commentator shirt. No. No. Oh, I love cream cheese. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Spread cream Spread cheese. Spread cheese. Okay. Not hate. Hate. I got it. So you got to go get that out of the closet. It was just really that one recipe that I didn't like cream cheese. I know. And it just scarred him. It scarred him for life. But scarred me for life. Whoa. Whoa. No. I hey. Okay. So I see these other things in here. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm get started. Why you you didn't even told me about that? Have no. You? Oh, that's why you're trying to get me so you can do things in a proper order. That's right. All right. <laughs> Tell him bye. Bye. I'll just stand here. One way to get on her nerves is to not do what she's telling me to do. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stand here and just hold her like this. <laughs> it's you on got, my nerves. Sometimes you just have to up the aggravation <laughs> just a notch. Bye. Bye. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, tonight we are making a creamy beef taco soup. Ma'am. Let's set this to the saute setting. Gracie Lou, there'll be cheese later. Okay, so it says it's hot. Let's put our Instant Pot little clip on here so it doesn't stir on us. There we go. We're gonna add in one pound of ground beef. I also have half an onion that I've already chopped. And you wanna use half of a bell pepper that you've chopped. I already had a red on hand. I don't think it matters what color. And let's just brown this up. I'm gonna leave the original recipe linked on my um, website, but I'm doing half of it. So just a heads up, this is not gonna make a whole lot. If you have a larger family, definitely do that whole recipe. You also wanna make sure that it's not, you don't have any um, spots on the bottom that are like have burned onto the pot. I think I'm good, but you'll get that burn notice if you do. Okay, now that this is done cooking, let's add in some more ingredients. I've got some minced garlic. You need about one clove for this, but the recipe says you need 12 ounces of beef broth. This can is 14 and a half ounces, so I'm gonna use almost the whole can. It says to use one can, a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I'm using some fire roasted tomatoes. That's just what we prefer. I'm gonna use a couple of ounces of salsa. That's gonna add a good flavor in there for sure. And then one pack of taco seasoning or two to three tablespoons of homemade taco seasoning. Now let's stir all of this to combine it. Let me take the clip off. We're gonna pop the lid on. Set it to ceiling. 
Gracie, honey, I'm trying, I'm trying to film. I really don't know what she thinks I'm doing over here. So let me hit cancel to turn it off of saute. And then we're gonna do pressure cook for two minutes and then we'll let it naturally release. Let me tell you, I waited 10 minutes, but then I decided to let the rest of the steam out. I just couldn't wait any longer. So there's that. But, so I let it naturally release for 10 minutes and then I released the rest of the steam. It smells really great. We've got our two ounces of cream cheese. It says it needs to be very soft. So I stuck it in the microwave for just a second. It's very soft. We're gonna add that in. I've also got a half a cup of heavy cream and we need about one cup of cheddar cheese. I'm dressed for success. Look, I just knocked tons of cheese on the floor. Great. Oh, Gracie, come on, little girl. <laughs> Honey, you see it? Oh. Oh. No? He's like, I don't trust you. It's right there. Oh. We got it. Nice. There's more. It's a, it's a good day for you. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now that we've added all of that in, let me move this closer so you can see. We are just going to stir this around until it has all combined and melted down really well. I gotta make sure that all the cream cheese is completely dissolved because that would be my luck. Stephen would get a big old bite of like cream cheese. It is very thin consistency. So I've brought it back up to a bubble. I'm gonna add in just a little bit. Sorry. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of cornstarch just to kind of thicken this up a little bit. And let's just see if that'll thicken it up just a tad. This is personal preference, y'all. This recipe, when I was looking at it, this is a keto-friendly recipe, so if you're not worried about keto, you could definitely add corn or beans to this, but we're gonna keep it as is. And you're gonna top this with whatever toppings you want. We are about to eat in a new location. Yeah. Spray cream cheese on it. That's right. All right, here we go. Got my uniform on, it's time to eat. That's right. All right, this looks really good look how creamy that looks wow mm -hmm. all right let's get a bite that is delicious is it oh wow creamy spicy yeah lots of flavor packed in there mm -hmm. oh yeah i love the tomatoes in there too fire nice roasted touch. tomatoes yeah Some fire roastedness in there I so we've that. got these hint of lime tortilla chips that we're eating it with mm. some avocado some sour cream oh man deliciousness oh yeah this is really, really, really good. Okay. What's this called? Uh, it's called creamy beef taco soup. Yeah. But it's a it's a keto meal. That's why it doesn't have any corn or uh, mm. beans in it. But you could definitely add that if you didn't want to be keto. We're not really keto, but yeah. you know, I was just following the recipe. Oh, that's great. It's really good. Love the avocado in there as well. Yeah. Sour cream makes it a little extra creamier and gives it a little extra flavor. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna dig in. Mm. I'll be right back. This is good. It's, it's really good. Really good. Yeah, is it, love it. Is it a go backer? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a go backer. All right, you're gonna go back? I'm gonna go back. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. All right. We'll bye. just hang out here in this new location that we haven't really yeah, talked about. Yeah, we haven't talked about that, have we? No. Well. Hmm. All right, go get you some more. Bye bye. <laughs> Stephen went inside to get some more soup, and I thought I would give y'all a little tour of the new location. We're gonna be having a lot of meals here from now on. So this is our screened porch with our gorgeous furniture. We did stamped concrete floors. They kind of look like wood floors, but they are concrete. And we got this gorgeous furniture from Sam's Club and it matches our concrete to a T. So we've got this little seating area over here. We've got a little mini fridge that Cole has stocked with all kinds of great things. And then this is the back of the house. Excuse the fact that we have brooms over there, <laughs> but we also have this beautiful hot tub that we have already been using for uh, three weeks now. And we absolutely love it. It is such a beautiful space that we are definitely going to be in entertaining in. That was one of the main reasons why we decided to do this. I grew up having a screened in porch and we always envisioned one at this house. As soon as we bought this house, we thought about this. We plan on putting our grill out here on the patio and really enjoying this space. 
and I knew we would be having a lot of meals out here and I wanted you guys to be a part of this to be able to see why we're all of a sudden out here and we've never been out here before. I mean, this stuff is good. I done went back several times. It's definitely got that cheesy, creamy, cheesy vibe, but like definitely don't like. You can't tell it's cream cheese. You can't though. tell it's cream cheese. Mm -mm. The flavor from the beef is still in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all should make this one. He mm. keeps saying, this is so good. Mm -hmm. This is so good. <laughs> like if you wanted to eat this with scoops, mm -hmm. it would be good too. Mm -hmm. The lime is a really good extra yeah. little something another. Yeah, you could throw some cilantro in there too. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. Do we have any left for leftovers? I'm not saving nobody, no. <laughs> we only have like enough for one bowl leftover. Okay, so this is in response to last Tuesday's video. Cole's appearance. Bunch of laughing faces. <laughs> I bet you get picked all the time with him and Steven around. I do. I get <laughs> picked little, on all the time. Yeah. And a little Miss Gracie Lou making sure she gets some cheese. For sure. I came here for recipes, but I keep coming back every week because y'all are just so fun to watch. Thank you for all the dinner inspiration. Really Between sweet. Stephen and Cole, they are constantly picking on me. Never. And when I get mad, they say th that. That's that, why we do it. We got it. We did it. That's why we do it. Every now and then, I'll refuse to give them a reaction. Yeah. And they're like, oh. Well, we're wanting her to come back with something. Like, you know, you gotta, you know. Sometimes I do. You gotta give you, it back to us. But usually I just get mad and they're like. She's just too sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight is a subby side. I think the last subby supper was a subby side. I've really gotten into trying new side dishes lately. This one comes from Karen. Karen got this from a blog called The Walks of Life. And she said that she knows that we love Brussels sprouts and we love spicy, so she thought she would send this over to us. She said that when she made it, she paired it with pan-fried chicken, also from The Walks of Life. These are called Honey Sriracha Roasted Brussels Sprouts. Okay, let's get started by preheating our oven to 450. Now, if you have an air fryer, these would probably be great in the air fryer. I currently do not have one because mine was recalled and I'm waiting to get a new one as a replacement. We're gonna thinly slice these and then after I thinly slice them, we're gonna throw them over here into this bowl. Now I need to roughly chop these two small cloves of garlic. I do wanna note that I am halving this recipe. The original recipe calls for two pounds of Brussels. I just did one pound um, and it calls for two cloves of garlic. I'm pretty much just doing one because this one is so small, or these are so small, so it is equals one pretty much. So let's add this over here in with our Brussels. Who is the Muscles from Brussels? Is that a thing? I feel like every time I say Brussels, I'm like Muscles from Brussels, but who is that? Tell me in the comments. Who am I referring to? I know that's a thing, right? That's someone, but who are they talking about? <laughs> Moving on to cooking. We are gonna drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil and gonna add some salt. Now, keep in mind that your sriracha does have salt as well, so you don't wanna add too much. In this very small bowl, we're gonna mix up our sriracha and honey and chili oil. Since I'm only doing half, I just need about a tablespoon of sriracha. It ain't wanna come out. <sighs> Why? Why do I always have this problem with sriracha? It's open. There we go. Whoop, oh, nope. Why? There we go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is comical. Do y'all have this problem with sriracha bottles too? By pouring it. I need a tablespoon of this, and then we need about a tablespoon and a half of honey, and something I've never cooked with before, chili oil. So I need about a tablespoon and a half of chili oil as well. So let me open this up. It really doesn't have much of a scent. I'm smelling it. Okay, let's add a tablespoon and a half of that. One and a half. I am gonna taste this and just kind of see. So it says you can adjust it to your level of spicy. I mean, I don't feel like it's all that hot. Oh wait, I'm getting a little heat in the back. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna add more. Yeah, it's got some heat to it. Now we're just gonna take this and drizzle this all over and just mix it all together. Let me grab my baking sheet. Even though it has oil on it, I just wanted to be sure. 
and let's dump this out into a single layer. All the single layers, all the single layers. Oh man, y'all, I wish you could smell this. Okay, this is going in the oven at 450 for about 15 to 20 minutes. If we need to, at the very end, we can turn it over to broil to make them really crispy. Just a helpful hint for removing the eggs from the egg cooker. Pick them up by the stem in the middle of the cooker and then put everything in the ice water. This person is talking about the little egg cooker that I have. And this is genius. And I think I saw somebody else mention it too. Hang on, I'm gonna show you what they're talking about. Is this the one that makes the really bad noise? Yes, when it, it sounds like a fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It, it always scares me every time it goes off. Me too. Okay, so in that video, I was reaching in and burning my hands, grabbing the eggs. And now, ow, ow. Ow, I always forget how hot they are. Hang on. <laughs> You're welcome for that. Now I'm gonna throw them in a little ice bath. They're saying I should have just picked up this entire tray and put that over into the ice water instead yeah. of me grabbing each egg and burning my fingers. That is genius. I'm gonna do that from now on. I don't know why. I've never thought about That's that. That's a good tip. So thank you very yeah, much. Don't burn yourself, man. I do. I burn myself every single time. Okay. Okay. Steven has no idea what this is. Brussels sprouts. He's so smart. Hold on, let me, let me turn this a little bit. I don't know what's in it besides the sprouts. Sprouts. For the Brussels. Who's the mussels from Brussels? Not allowed to talk for the rest of the night. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know? No. Okay, y'all y'all gotta come in and tell me, wait, 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 we did not tink. That's good. Ooh, spicy. The spice gets you afterwards. Oh, what is that? <laughs> wow, that's really good. The spice though. Yeah. When you first take a bite, it does not taste spicy. Mm. It's got sriracha, honey, and chili oil. That is good. Oh, I like God. that a lot. I know. Stay on camera nice there, buddy. Flavors. Very good job. Great job. <laughs> so this was a subby side. Subby sides. From Karen. Love it. Thank you, Karen. Mm-hmm. Very good. Delicious. Delicious.